Hey guys, it's great to see you again. Um, so I'm here to talk to you tonight about the, um, the article by Peggy McIntosh, White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. I'd really encourage you to go online and find the article yourself. Um, it's a pretty short article. It's only like four pages. Yeah, it's three and like a third pages. Um, it's a really easy to read article and there really isn't a whole lot of vocabulary that um, the average person wouldn't understand. It's, um, it's just a pretty easy read. If you're not used to reading scholarly articles, they can get kind of like wordy and confusing and they use all this you know terminology that's really specific to the particular area of study that you're looking at. Um, and this really isn't like that. It was published in 1989 and it was one of the earlier works on looking at white privilege. Um, from a white person's perspective. Of course, there were African Americans publishing on whiteness and whiteness studies, you know, for a really long time, but it kind of took us <laughs> as white people a little while to get on the train. <laughs> so um, anyway, just to go over really quickly some of the main points of the article. Um, what I really liked about it is the way that she talked about um, privilege as something that isn't really taught about in school. Um, it's not really talked about in homes even, but it's something that very much exists. And people, um, white people tend to describe their culture as normal or, you know, their values as like just everyday average American. But really the fact of the matter is it's white culture and white values. And to call it normal or just average or everyday American really discounts the experiences and the contributions of other people of color. Um, and so in order to celebrate that, we kind of have to shift our thinking in the way that we talk about ourselves and the way that we perceive ourselves. And that's really what this article is all about. It talks about laying down the privilege of, you know, adhering to um, what she calls meritocracy. That's really the only word that I thought that maybe some of you wouldn't know. Meritocracy is just the belief that we earn things by merit. Um, if you have good things, it's because you're a good person. You work hard and you earned it. If you don't have good things, it's because you're lazy um, or irresponsible or you're on drugs or, you know, something crazy like that. And we really, I mean, we know, I'm sure you can all think of someone who's just a rich, spoiled brat who has everything they could ever want, but it's not because they earned it or worked hard for it. It's because they were born into a family that had those things. And it's the same thing with poverty. We like to think that you can pull yourself up by, the, by your bootstraps and just move forward, but the reality is that's almost impossible. Um, and it's very, very rare for someone to actually move up in class um, compared to what they were born into. It's very unusual. Um, and so that's kind of, she kind of debunks meritocracy a little bit. Um, and she talks about how you know, we have to be willing to look at the ways that we're privileged and advantaged. And we have to understand that when we have an advantage, it means that somebody else has a disadvantage. And we have to understand that there's two sides to that coin. And when we know that racism exists and that it's a problem, we have to understand that if we're not going to play a part in oppressing people and buying into this racist system, we have to speak up and we have to gain understanding and we have to be able to make a difference. And a lot of that comes from just having conversations like this one that we're having tonight. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing your comments and thoughts about the article um, and what you think, especially if you've read it. But even if you haven't, um, if you just watched the video, I'd really like to hear your thoughts. Um, she also has a list of all the different, not all the different, some of the different <laughs> privileges that white people have over people of color. And some of the ones that really stood out to me were um, I can turn on the television or open the front page of the paper and see people of my race widely represented. I can arrange to protect my children most of the time from people who might not like them. I am never asked to speak for all the people of my racial group. I can easily buy posters, postcards, picture books, greeting cards, dolls, toys, and children's magazines featuring people of my race. I can remain oblivious to the language and customs of persons of color who constitute the world's majority without feeling in my culture any penalty for such oblivion. Um, when I am told about our national heritage or about civilization, I am shown that people of my color made it what it is. Um, and so 
those were some of the ones that really stood out to me. There's a lot of other ones that are very relevant. Um, so I do hope you'll, you'll go back and you'll read it. And she closes with a section called Earned Strength, Unearned Power. And she kind of helps us learn how to discern which privileges are appropriate for us to have. Like we should be able to buy children's toys and books and we should be able to see ourselves in advertising you know, and we should be able to have access to these resources where white people are represented. That's a good thing to have. However, we also want to advocate for other people to have access to those same resources. It's not something to be hoarded or shared, and it doesn't cost us anything to, you know, give opportunities to other people to be highlighted and represented. So that's really important, um, and I really liked that. And she also talked about how there are some advantages that we shouldn't have. Um, like being able to look at history and see that we're the only ones that made it. You know, we need to be able to see the contributions of African Americans. We need to be able to see the contributions of Native Americans, um, Mexican Americans, and other Latin Americans, Asian Americans. I mean, if you go through history and you really study it, you'll learn that all of these people groups played a really big role in making America what it is today, and they often go unrecognized. Um, and so those are some examples of some of the things that she talks about in the article. Like I said, it's only like three and a third pages, so definitely Google for it. It'll come up. Um, it's really easy to find. Um, so Google for it, find the article, read it for yourself, and let me know what you think. I'm really excited to hear your thoughts below about the article and the video, um, and I'm really excited about having a conversation with you about this. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.